Am I the butthole? For giving my nine-year-old niece a tiny amount of alcohol? Posted by no suggestion for 1,226. Cooking is one of my favorite hobbies and one of my favorite cuisines is Japanese. I don't have kids and honestly don't particularly like them lol, but my brother and sister-in-law have a nine-year-old girl. Once every three or four months she comes over to my apartment for a sleepover. Usually we'll get something to eat, watch TV, play with my cat and then go to the aquarium or something before I drop her back off at my brother's trailer the next day. Lately she's been getting into anime, so we came up with the idea to make a reasonably authentic Japanese meal together. This was the menu of tuna tataki with homemade tataki sauce blanched bok choy seasoned simply with salt, sesame oil, and sesame seeds, white rice, ajitsu tamego suimono tsukimono recap specifically since I prepared the ajitsu tamego the day before since they have to marinate for 24 hours, and I used store bought recap since ain't nobody got time for that but we made everything else from scratch together. Here's the thing. My suimono recipe is pretty simple and includes kombu slash katsu bushidashi salt, soy sauce, mirin, sake, green onions, wakim, and mushrooms. We had a good time, but apparently when my niece got home, she told her parents that she had alcohol. And now my sister-in-law is pissy because I gave her child alcohol even though I use one tablespoon of sake per batch of suimono 16 ounces, so two servings. The girl literally consumed half a tablespoon of sake. That's not enough to matter at all. My brother sees my perspective but is asking me to apologize just to get this to blow over, but I don't think I should have to. It's not my fault that his wife is uncultured and does not understand that a small amount of sake is integral to the flavor of Surimono. I so badly want to be like, fine, next time I'll give her frozen chicken nuggets and craft macaroni and cheese. I'm sure she'll be used to that, but I know better than to make the situation even worse. But am I the butthole? if I refuse to apologize. What do you think? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. And now to the comments. A comment from Eregal AC. Not the butthole, cooking with alcohol is not the same as drinking alcohol. A portion of it burns off and the rest is so diluted to not make a difference. A lot of medicines even have small amounts of alcohol in them. User Ninja Nerka likes to add. Not the butthole. I routinely use wine and beer on my cooking and my kids haven't turned into alcoholics yet. A comment from Sephir. Not the butthole for the sake, but the butthole for the way you're talking about your sister-in-law. She is uncultured because she does not know a lot about cooking. And if your niece truly only gets to eat crappy food at home, that's just as much your brother's fault. Oh, and Mirren is also alcohol, so she actually got more than half a teaspoon. It is not a man who 1984 likes to add... Not the butthole for cooking with alcohol. He the butthole for being insufferable food snob towards your sister-in-law in the post. A comment from Anastasi Yaminen. Jeez, you are pretentious. I have no clue what Japanese food you are describing. I like katsu, ramen, etc. She is a kid. What's wrong with making her kids food? My niece and us will go to different restaurants so she can try but come and stop the pretentious behavior. A comment from Miss Mefer. You the butthole if you really insist on your pride over what is a reasonable request. Your position is also reasonable, however your opinions do not trump your niece's mothers. If she's offended you used alcohol in your food preparation, then apologize for your mistake, learn from it, and move on. That this is such a huge issue implies there is more going on here, rather than a simple misunderstanding. Perhaps ask why you insist on fighting a needless battle to prove a point. Dear listener, if you like this content, please consider subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. Thank you for your consideration. To the next post. Am I the butthole? For turning off a video game that my son and his friends were playing? Hosted by Automatic Surprise 504. My son had a sleepover with a few of his friends last night. They had gone swimming and played at the park before coming back to my house to play video games in the living room. I bought them a pizza to eat and was overwhelmed by the smell of 10 slash 11 yo boy armpits. I told them to go put deodorant on and they said okay. I checked in with them a few minutes later and they still hadn't washed up. At that point they started to push back that they didn't need it because they already put some on last night. I said whatever deodorant they put on last night had gotten washed off at the pool and you all spent the last hours running around in warm weather. I told them again to put some on. They still didn't put any on so I turned off their video game. 
Apparently they were just about to pass a difficult level before I turned it off and were very upset with me. My son later told me that I embarrassed him. I told him that I handled it the way that I did because I wasn't getting their attention. And now to the comments. Billy Rizzo likes to add. You the butthole there kids, they do this sort of thing. You definitely embarrassed your son in front of his friends for a relatively minor issue. I will say it is a lesson they needed to learn. Being smelly as an adult is embarrassing. Good to teach kids hygiene is important. Kari Kadora likes to add. You the butthole. Kids smell. You can tell your son to put deodorant on in private, but you have no right to enforce anything on his friends. If you expect prepubescent and pubescent boys to smell good, skip any of them coming over to yours for the next five minutes, seven years. A comment from Ron Sedin Pointeons. You the butthole. Preteen and teen boys smell even with deodorant. You did embarrass him in front of his friends, I'm pretty sure those boys will not want to be spending time at your house anymore because you that mama. You could have handled it better or not at all because you don't control other people's bodies, especially those who are not even your own children. Maris Kimmel commented. You the butthole do you immediately get up and do things that people ask you to? I know I don't. I wrap up whatever I am doing and then make or do what I was asked. Teens are still people not little robots to immediately do your bidding. You could have a lead time for them to wrap up their level. Sifra Loma 85 likes to add You the butthole Expecting the kids to jump when you say jump when they are engrossed in something they are enjoying is unreasonable especially for something very minor. Better would be to ask them when a good stopping point is and then get their compliance once they reach it. Turning the game off because they didn't immediately comply is disrespectful and if this is how you typically parent probably will lead to your child resenting you and rebelling against you as they grow up. Jessica 1111 likes to add You the butthole I feel like if he's embarrassed of you for a good reason. There's a lot worse things in life than a group of boys smelling while gaming. I really don't think he should have been so strict and impatient with them while they're having their fun. I hope his friends don't give him crap for your behaviour. Check out our playlist that summarise all posts of a specific topic. You can find them in the description box. To the next post. Am I the butthole? For drunk calling my friend's ex-boyfriend to take care of her baby? Posted by girl T Fifa 1863. I 26 have a friend my 26 from college. She invited me to her birthday at tacos and tequila night. I was late to the party due to traffic and surprised by the number of people in her flat. There was a group chat for the party that had around 15 people and I could see Fodish in her garden. Most people were very drunk and I was sober at the point. I saw my and I drive me to do a shot with her that turned into about four. I wore a nice coat and even though I was tipsy I remember feeling warm and wanting to put it away in case it gets dirty. I asked Maya if I could go put it away. She told me to put it on her bed upstairs. I went upstairs and I saw her former son was in his cot. He was crying and I didn't hear it before as there was loud music. Maya was definitely too drunk to take care of him and now I'm a massive lightweight so I knew the shots would hit me soon so I wouldn't be able to either. I called Maya's ex-boyfriend Tom her son's dad to come and collect the baby as it was definitely unsafe to leave him unattended. Tom thanked me for letting him know and said he'd be over soon. Maya saw me open the door for Tom and slammed it on his face. She yelled at me saying they'd just broken up and she didn't want to see him. I remember letting Tom in again and trying to console her but she flat out started screaming at both Tom and me and kicked us both out. I genuinely don't think I was in the wrong for calling Tom and thought my when sober would agree, but this morning she has texted me calling me the butthole and that I literally could have called anyone else to help out with her son. Most of our friends were drunk at the party. Some of our mutual friends who overheard us think I should have called her sister instead. Tom will use this when they fight for custody, and it will probably favor him now. I wasn't completely sober at the time, but my boyfriend is saying I did the right thing. Myra is my friend and I love her, but I couldn't leave her son like that. And now to the comments. Here Superfin commented. Not the butthole she should lose custody for this, it's child neglect. Fuzzy Mike likes to add. Not the butthole drunk Maya leaving her crying baby to party and yelling at the kid's dad when he shows up to care for it a drunk Maya. Apparently sober Maya agrees with drunk Maya. He might take their disapproval as a badge of honor. Being disliked by either Maya sounds like a good thing to be. A comment from Parsimonious Salad. Not the butthole. Tom can use this when they fight for custody, and he should. Who leaves a former baby screaming alone when everyone is drunk at a party? No sign to 7086 commented.
Not the butthole he deserves custody. That's horrible for the poor baby. How else Morris likes to add. Most decidedly not the butthole. Your friend was drunk and, quite frankly, neglecting her baby. You called the baby's father to remove him from the situation and care for the baby properly. The baby is a living, breathing human being. He isn't a purse or a pair of shoes your friend owns and can put in the closet until she needs them again. This morning she has texted me calling me the butthole and that I literally could have called anyone else to help out with her son. Most of our friends were drunk at the party. Some of our mutual friends who overheard us think I should have called her sister instead. Tom will use this when they fight for custody and it will probably favour him now. Bird, if your friend does not have enough common sense not to get hopelessly drunk while her child is in her custody and care, she needs to face the music. This young woman could have arranged for child care and didn't. A comment from Mayor Charles Cowan. Not the butthole my bed or get her poop together. Like it or not, she has a helpless baby who depends on her to have her poop together and care for him. To the next post. Am I the butthole? For leaving my BFF at the hospital because my little brother died 12 hours earlier. Posted by double remote 7164. Using fake names. My BFF is Amy and my little brother is John. In the fall of 2019, John passed away tragically at only 15. He was hit by a car while riding his bike to school. John was a high-functioning autistic and had missed the bus that day, so he decided to ride his bike. My parents' driveway had a steep decline that led into the road. He rode down the driveway and lost control of the brakes. He then went into the road where he immediately was struck by a car going 55. He flew 30 feet into a nearby ditch. He was brain and alive on impact and was soon rushed to the hospital. I was inconsolable and drove to the hospital as quickly as I could. When I arrived, they had already pronounced my brother unalive. It was the worst day of my life. I called Amy and she drove two hours to our house. My whole family was distraught and we couldn't believe that this happened right outside of our house. We all grabbed a beer and tried to calm down. I was so happy that Amy drove down to be with me in my time of need. She was the best, or so I thought. She decided that it was a good idea to run to the liquor store and purchase more booze. I was not really in the mood to drink and only had the one beer. When she got back, her and my grandfather, who was a bad alcoholic, kept drinking and drinking. As time went on, Amy got so drunk that she ended up puking everywhere. My sister and I carried her to the guest bedroom and I stayed in bed with her so I could keep an eye on her. Then she started saying things that made no sense and then started convulsing. I was terrified. It got so bad to the point where I had to drive her to the hospital. The same hospital where my brother just died. When I brought her into the hospital and checked her in, the nurse asked if I was related to her. I said no, and they told me I would have to wait outside. They assured me that she would be fine, but I was not allowed in. There, I sat in the same exact chair in the same waiting room twice in one day. I was shaking with so many emotions. I could not find her phone and didn't have her parents' number, so I drove to their house and told her parents where she was and what was going on. And I just left and went home to be with my family. The next day, I awoke with text messages from her sister's phone. Amy was yelling at me and asked why I just left her in the hospital and went and told her parents that she was drunk. She said I was an awful friend. I snapped and told to don't bother coming to the funeral. I had to end up taking care of her in the toughest moment in my life. Her family and some of mine think I had a friend not just staying with her to make sure that she was okay, but my siblings and I think that she should have been responsible for herself and should have been there to help me through my brother's death. So am I the butthole? And now to the comments. The creative username commented, NTA. And don't let anyone try to tell you otherwise. I am so sorry for your loss. A comment from God's unwanted daughter. But you didn't leave her. You called her parents because she was in the hospital. I am making the assumption her parents went to the hospital after you told them. I went through the same thing with a friend. She got so drunk at a work function that a co-worker messaged me that she was in the hospital and the first thing I did? Call her mom. You're absolutely not the butthole. A comment from Real Ultimate Papa. This is so messed up. You lost your brother in the worst way and your friend is more concerned about her alcohol-induced seizure not the butthole. Surround yourself with people who truly care about you and forget anyone else. You can make it through this, but it will be the hardest fight of your life so far. 
Crafty Pumpkin 1960 one commented, Not the butthole. She is a bad friend, not you. She inflicted her drunken condition on herself. No one made her continue drinking and it was a completely inappropriate decision. She should be groveling for not being sober enough to provide support that he needed. You made sure she had medical care and her parents were aware. She should never have put you in the position of having to do that. Do not let her or anyone else make you feel bad about this. A comment from Abisaf 34. 10 million percent not the butthole. I am so sorry for your loss. You had just gone through something so awful there are no words, and she your best friend decides to get herself and your grandfather drunk. You then have to drive her to the hospital and are not even allowed in to see her. You end up waiting in the place where your brother had just died and it upsets you naturally. She then calls you a bad friend. She got herself drunk. She's a horrible friend and you are definitely not the butthole. She had her family there because you went to their house and told them, right? It's not like you abandoned her. She surely couldn't have expected you to just sit there when you are not allowed and since you are not related to her. A comment from Affectionate Hand 2206. I am so sorry for your loss. It's crazy that anyone would think that you're the age. Amy's Tia. Who goes into a situation like this and thinks you know what's missing from this party? Alcohol poisoning. It's not like Amy landed in hospital due to factors outside of her control. She made the decision to drink herself stupid. You went above and beyond in your time of grief to make sure she was taken care of. She should be apologizing. Instead, she is doubling down on her assholery. Not the butthole. To the next post. Am I the butthole? For yelling at my father, I refuse to marry a guy who treats me like how he treats my mom. Posted by Capable Alarm 3509. My father, 58 male, and my mom, 53 female, don't have the greatest marriage. My father did the whole work outside the house and my mom did everything else. Cooking, cleaning, raising both my sister and I, etc. Honestly, any normal person probably would have left my father, but my mom is very against divorce, so made it work at all costs. I'm seven years older than my sister because my mom had some serious complications when pregnant with me and didn't want another one but my father threatened divorce because he wanted a boy but was angry my sister came out and continued to complain he only had daughters. Now I am 29 female a dentist and because of my father I am really sensitive to bullshit from any guy I date. I make a lot more than anyone else in my age group so I at least expect my partner to do equal chores. I haven't yet met a guy who will do equal cosmos say they will but in practice think equal chores is mowing the lawn once a week. And most don't like the thought I will probably be the main breadwinner. One even suggested I reduce my hours if we were to marry so that I can do more housework. In my parents' day the person who made less my mom usually quit their job and took care of everything but now when it's the guys making less expecting them to wash dishes and vacuum is somehow asking for too much or they will just claim a pig size acceptable and not clean. Anyway, because of this, I'm still happily single because I refuse to tolerate what my mom did. My father is always complaining about my singleness to me, my sister, my mom, and anyone who will hear saying I make too much for guys to be comfortable with and I'm too old to be picky so I should just marry anyone. He did this again recently and I yelled at him that he's the reason I won't tolerate bullshit because I refuse to be treated like how he treat my mom and he stormed off calling me a crazy feminist. My mom keeps defending him saying not to take it personally and he wants the best for me but I am convinced he just wants me barefoot and pregnant cause he's old fashioned as hell. And now to the comments. Daphne Thunderbolt likes to add. Absolutely not the butt hole. Being single is way better than settling. Don't you dare feel bad for what you said. It's the truth. A comment from Weekend Breakfasts. Congratulations on being so successful at such a young age. Wait it out for the guy who will not be scared of your income. You won't necessarily be the sole breadwinner or your independence and desire for equity in the relationship. They exist, but they are sometimes not ripe until later on. Not the butthole. A comment from DLC Matroni. Hello, old old. You're 29. Stick with your guns. Your dad has the butthole in the scenario. You've got excellent expectations, don't settle for anything less. Good things come to those who wait. Not the butthole, good luck. A comment from Stoke King. Not the butthole. Why are you putting up with this bullshit? The only things missing from your posters would it knock you out to smile more, and if you reject every ebbing moron with a short violent temper, a forked tongue and a drinking problem, you might be left on the shelf. Oh wait, they already said the last bit. You are worth more than this. A comment from Pro David. Not the butthole, you are not crazy feminist, you are normal feminist. Like, the actual normal definition of feminist. 
You do normal human stuff, expecting other people to treat you as such, and being a woman is just extra info on top. If you say you are happily single, stay being happily single. Just make sure to yourself you are not staying single out of spite to you, father. He would see but likes to add. Not the butthole. You're right about your father. To the next post. Am I the butthole? For making my parents kick my nephew out of their well. Posted by any I spot at 1884. A 47 female have always had a very strange relationship with my brother 50 when male. He has had a very bad accident when he was 17 and spent three months in a coma. Ever since he has been the child my parents swooned over and they make excuses for everything he does. I've been to therapy because of this for over a decade as I resented him for my parents forgetting about me when I was younger, even though I love my parents to death. My nephew 31 male has basically been raised by my parents as well. His mom passed away during childbirth and my brother lived with our parents till about four years ago when he moved in with his girlfriend. Because my brother is handicapped and does not have big motor skills, a lot of the childcare was taken care of by my parents over the years. Till my nephew moved out of state five years ago for his job. A couple of weeks ago, my parents were meeting with their lawyer to set up their will, as they are both no longer in the best of health and want to make sure we're taken care of. The only big thing they have is their house and car. They were talking about that they want to split the inheritance three ways and I got confused and asked them why three ways considering it's only me and my brother. They said they wanted my nephew in there as well, as they basically raised him since birth and consider him largely as their child too. I told them that's not fair as I have two kids as well and if my nephew is in the will, they should as well. My brother said that what they are doing with their money is their business and I should stay out of it, but I disagreed. Eventually my parents agreed and didn't give my nephew his share. My brother called it a giant dick move and called me petty to punish my nephew for the resentment I have towards him. We broke out into a fight that my parents had to unfortunately break up. My nephew called me a couple of days ago to check in on my youngest as he is her godfather. He had already heard what happened and just said that it was a bit of Karen move to do, but he is unbothered by it as it's none of his business, but my brother is still very upset with me and my parents are rather cold to me as well. Am I the butthole? Here. And now to the comments. Peter Friend 86 likes to add. Not the butthole. OP's parents brought OP into the conversation about distribution and OP gave the opinion that a will that included the nephew should also include OP's children. Trash v 13 likes to add. Your parents are called to you for being factual. They have three grandkids so if they want to give to their grandkid they should also give it to the other two. Fair is fair. Do they even know or address the fact that they caused you being in therapy because of them? Like sure your brother needed more support, but they ignored you. In the end it is their money, but they should be fair in my country. It does not even matter what is written in the will you get percent of the inheritance. Brainchild 110 likes to add. Not the butthole slash everybody sucks here I see this from two angles. When it's the money, they can do what they want with it. However, this is entirely cancelled out by them asking for your opinion. If they asked, or told you their plans ahead of time, they don't get to complain if you had an opinion and it wasn't what they wanted to hear. To what's fair? The estate either being split between you and your brother only two ways because you are the kids and you can then distribute the assets to your families if you see fit, or after you die. Or the estate being split between the two children and the three grandchildren five ways equally. Because nephew is not their child, no matter how you look at it, so should not be counted as one legally. Or them shutting their mouths, going to a lawyer and doing whatever they want to, and you all dealing with it once they pass. But they didn't do that. Not at all. Your nephew, your brother and your parents are the butthole for involving themselves in a conversation with you about something they should have stayed quiet about, then trying to silence you when you demanded their arrangement be fair. Literally the way they wanted to deal with it was robbing you and your children, while raising up the nephew of your own children's level of importance in their lives. That would also make them the butthole. You from the very first four commented. Not the butthole, they can't ignore your children after ignoring you because of your brother. A comment from Pixel Gamer. It's weird to me that you made someone you hate so much your child's godfather. On Shishrink 99 likes to add. It's amazing how grabby people get with the possessions of others when the subject of death comes up. They raised him just like they raised the two of you. Would you be saying the same thing if they had simply adopted a third child? Sheesh. You're the butthole. If you like the videos I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. That is all I have for you today. I hope you liked it. Have a nice day and hopefully I see you soon.